From a tiny island to the throne of France, Napoleon Bonaparte's journey is nothing short of legendary. He wasn't just a brilliant military strategist. He was a man of contradictions, charm, and relentless ambition. So, put on your thinking berets, grab a baguette, and prepare yourself for a roller coaster ride through the life of one of history's most fascinating figures. Napoleon Bonaparte was born Napoleone di Buonaparte on August 15, 1769, in Ajaccio, Corsica, just one year after the island was transferred from Genoa to France. He was the second of eight children born to Carlo Buonaparte, a lawyer and political opportunist, and Letizia Ramolino, a strong-willed and ambitious woman. Napoleon's family belonged to the minor nobility, but they were by no means wealthy. Carlo's gambling habits and lavish lifestyle often left the family in financial straits, which would later shape Napoleon's views on the importance of fiscal responsibility. At the age of nine, Napoleon was shipped off to the French mainland to attend the Brienne Military School. It was here that he first developed his love for military strategy and his fascination with the great generals of history, such as Alexander the Great and Julius Caesar. Napoleon excelled in his studies, particularly in mathematics and geography, and he graduated from Brienne in just five years. As a student, Napoleon was often teased by his classmates for his thick Corsican accent and his less than impressive stature. He was nicknamed the Little Corporal due to his short height of 5 feet 2 inches. He may have been small, but he had big plans, like world domination kind of big. He was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the artillery regiment of La Faire in 1785 at the age of 16. As a young artillery officer, he quickly aligned himself with the revolutionary cause and gained a reputation as a brilliant military strategist. In 1793, Napoleon was promoted to the rank of brigadier general and given command of the artillery at the Siege of Toulon, where he successfully drove out the British forces. Napoleon's military successes caught the attention of the revolutionary government, and in 1796, he was given command of the French army in Italy. It was here that Napoleon truly began to shine as a military leader. He led his troops to a series of stunning victories against the Austrians and Italians, displaying his mastery of fast-paced, aggressive warfare. Napoleon's Italian campaign made him a national hero in France. During the Italian campaign, Napoleon developed a taste for fine Italian cuisine and would often indulge in pasta dishes and gelato. He might have conquered Italy, but it was the gelato that conquered his heart. In 1799, Napoleon returned to France as a celebrated military hero and a political force to be reckoned with. On November 9, 1799, Napoleon staged a coup d'état, overthrowing the Directory and establishing himself as the First Consul of France. As First Consul, Napoleon set about reforming the country's legal system, creating the Napoleonic Code, which is still the basis of French law today. He centralized the government, made peace with the Catholic Church through the Concordat of 1801, and embarked on a series of public works projects to improve infrastructure and stimulate the economy. Napoleon's leadership style was a mix of charm, intimidation, and sheer force of will. He once said, Impossible is a word to be found only in the Dictionary of Fools, and probably also in the Dictionary of People Who Don't Like Croissants. In 1804, Napoleon took the ultimate step in his quest for power and had himself crowned Emperor of France in a lavish ceremony at Notre Dame Cathedral. In a stunning display of self-aggrandizement, Napoleon snatched the crown from the hands of Pope Pius VII and placed it on his own head because, you know, why not? As Emperor, Napoleon set his sights on conquering the rest of Europe. He led his armies in a series of brilliant campaigns defeating the Austrians, Prussians, and Russians, among others. In July 1807, Napoleon Bonaparte, fresh off his diplomatic success at the Treaty of Tilsi, decided to celebrate with a grand rabbit hunt. His chief of staff, Alexandre Berthier, arranged the event, securing hundreds of rabbits for the occasion. But in a twist fit for a comedy, Berthier had unknowingly gathered domesticated rabbits instead of wild ones. As the eager hunters awaited their prey, the cages were opened, and the rabbits, rather than bolting away in fear, charged straight at Napoleon and his men. 
These bunnies, accustomed to humans and expecting a meal, saw Napoleon not as a hunter, but as their new best friend. What began as a regal hunt quickly turned into a fluffy stampede. Napoleon, usually commanding on the battlefield, found himself besieged by an army of cuddly adversaries. The rabbits leapt and bounded, swarming his boots, clambering up his legs, and generally causing a ruckus. His men, caught between laughter and bewilderment, tried to fend off the furry onslaught, but to no avail. Napoleon retreated, flailing his arms in a desperate bid to escape the relentless wave of cuteness. He scrambled back to his carriage, rabbit still in hot pursuit, and shut the door behind him. Even then, the persistent bunnies tried to hop aboard, undeterred by their quarry's escape. Some of Napoleon's most famous military victories include the Battle of Austerlitz, 1805, where he defeated the combined forces of Austria and Russia, and the Battle of Jena Auerstedt, 1806, where he crushed the Prussian army. Napoleon also formed alliances with other European powers, such as the Treaty of Tilsit with Russia in 1807, which divided Europe into French and Russian spheres of influence. His armies were known for their brutality and their ability to live off the land, often leaving devastation in their wake. Napoleon once remarked, Death is nothing, but to live defeated and inglorious is to die daily, which is pretty dark. But then again, he was a guy who named himself Emperor. Napoleon was a master of propaganda and used art and architecture to promote his image as a powerful and benevolent ruler. He commissioned numerous portraits and sculptures of himself, often depicted in heroic poses or as a Roman emperor. The famous painting, Napoleon Crossing the Alps by Jacques Louis David, is a prime example of how Napoleon crafted his public persona, even if he probably never crossed the Alps on a horse that looked like it came out of a fairy tale. In addition to his military campaigns, Napoleon also waged economic warfare against his enemies, particularly Britain. In 1806, he implemented the Continental System, a trade embargo designed to cripple the British economy by blocking their access to European markets. Although the Continental System had some success in damaging British trade, it also had the unintended consequence of hurting the economies of France and its allies. His policies also led to inflation and economic instability, which would contribute to his eventual downfall. Napoleon's military successes began to unravel in the early 1810s. In 1812, he launched a disastrous invasion of Russia, which resulted in the near-total destruction of his army. The Russian campaign was a turning point in Napoleon's fortunes, marking the beginning of the end of his empire. At the same time, Napoleon was also facing a prolonged guerrilla war in Spain, known as the Peninsular War. The Spanish resistance, aided by British forces under the Duke of Wellington, proved to be a thorn in Napoleon's side, tying down hundreds of thousands of French troops and draining resources from his other campaigns. As Napoleon's military defeats mounted, his enemies began to close in. In 1814, a coalition of European powers including Britain, Austria, Prussia, and Russia invaded France and forced Napoleon to abdicate the throne. He was exiled to the island of Elba, off the coast of Italy, where he was allowed to keep his title of emperor and rule over the tiny island. However, Napoleon's exile was short-lived. In February 1815, he escaped from Elba and returned to France, where he was greeted by cheering crowds and a nation eager to follow him once again. Napoleon quickly raised a new army and set out to confront his enemies, but he was ultimately defeated at the Battle of Waterloo on June 18, 1815. During his brief exile on Elba, Napoleon kept himself busy by planning improvements to the island's infrastructure and even designing a new flag for his miniature empire. He also had a torrid affair with the wife of one of his officers, proving that even in exile, Napoleon's legendary charm and appetites remained intact. After his defeat at Waterloo, Napoleon was exiled once again, this time to the remote island of St. Helena in the South Atlantic. During his final years on St. Helena, Napoleon occupied his time by dictating his memoirs, meticulously recording his version of events and ensuring his legacy would endure. He spent countless hours recounting his military campaigns, political maneuvers, and personal experiences. 
His writings aim to justify his actions and cement his place in history as a visionary leader and a misunderstood genius. Life on the island was harsh and monotonous. The once vibrant emperor was now confined to a small, damp residence called Longwood House, which was a far cry from the palaces and opulent surroundings he was accustomed to. The climate was harsh, and the isolation took a toll on his spirit and health. Napoleon's health began to deteriorate, and he died on May 5, 1821, at the age of 51, likely from stomach cancer. Napoleon's last words were a poignant reflection on his life. France, the army, head of the army, Josephine. Even in his final moments, Napoleon's thoughts were with his country, his military prowess, and his beloved first wife, Josephine, whom he had divorced in 1809 to marry Marie-Louise of Austria. In the end, perhaps the most important lesson we can take from Napoleon's life is the danger of unchecked ambition and the corrosive effects of power. As Lord Acton famously said, power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Napoleon's rise and fall serve as a cautionary tale for all those who would seek to dominate others through force and intimidation. But despite his flaws and his ultimate defeat, Napoleon remains a towering figure in history, a man whose life and achievements continue to inspire and fascinate us to this day. Wow, what a journey. If you found this exploration of Napoleon's legacy as fascinating as we did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more epic historical content. And if you're feeling extra Napoleonic, why not leave a comment sharing your favorite Napoleon fact, quote, or meme?